Welcome to the Town of Orinoke MS-4 Permit Overview and Stormwater Pollution Prevention Training Program. Today we are going to watch a short video that will define stormwater and where it goes. We'll get a brief overview of the Town of Orinoke stormwater regulations. We'll talk about what um, are allowable non-stormwater discharges. We'll discuss specific practices that are currently in place, place to meet our permit requirements, and we'll also talk about um, specific town practices that prevent and control the release of pollutants to stormwater. Where does stormwater go? Just follow the flow. Stormwater is rain and snow melt that flows over hard surfaces, washes down storm drains, and ends up in ditches. Stormwater collects pollutants such as pet waste, soil runoff, salt from snow melt, detergents from wash water, cigarette butts, and litter. But did you know stormwater is untreated and storm drains lead straight to our local water bodies? Stormwater pollution harms aquatic plants and animals. Soil and sediment affect photosynthesis, clog fish gills, and degrade habitat. Oils, detergents, and pet waste lower oxygen levels in water as they decompose, and toxic salt levels can be found year-round in heavy use areas. Plus, bacteria and viruses in stormwater harm humans and wildlife. Clean waterways mean a healthy future for everyone. Now that we know what stormwater is and why it's important that we keep it clean, um, a little bit of history on why we have some regulation. Um, back in the late 70s, the Clean Water Act was passed. It's a federal act. And so this is all regulated by the EPA but the authority to enforce has been delegated to Maine DEP. So that means that um, our permit is written by the state of Maine and reviewed by um, the federal government. There were um, three or two separate phases for um, the municipal separate storm sewer system, which is what the town of Orono falls under. Phase one was for populations greater than 100,000 and that started in 1990. And after they did a couple rounds of permits um, under phase one, they brought in phase two, which is urbanized areas, which the town of Orono is part of the greater Bangor urbanized area. Our first five-year permit started in 2003. Each permit increases the regulations and tightens standards. And um, we are now uh, getting ready to embark upon our fourth permit, um, but it took quite a long time to write so that the permit three lasted from 2013 to 2022. What does this MS4 permit mean? It means that Orono must prevent the discharge of pollutants into and out of the town stormwater system. So the stormwater system, those are the catch basins and um, ditches and um, underground pipes that carry the water from our streets to our streams. It also means that we have to minimize stormwater pollution associated with municipal activities and we'll talk about um, standard operations that we do to um, minimize those uh, potentials. And there's also, um, if we are egregiously violating our permit, there could be uh, fines of up to $25,000 per day per violation. So we definitely want to make sure that we follow all the, the permit guidelines. So allowable non-stormwater discharges, this is in the state permit that says these are the things that um, can flow down into our storm drain system. Um, any residential activity, so if you're washing your car at home, that's an allowed activity. Landscape irrigation, so any runoff that might happen um, from watering the landscape is allowed. Hydrant flushing, um, can still go through the stormwater system. Uh, street washing water, if there's a natural spring, uh, that can go into the um, stormwater system. And of course, firefighting activities. We don't have to put up a berm around our storm trains before we start fighting a fire. Every MS-4 permit has six minimum control measures. The first is public education and outreach. 
Our message for the first two audiences, the general public and the school department, is that storm water runs off of our hard surfaces and goes essentially straight to our water bodies and that there is no treatment um, between when they see it run into the storm drain and when it comes out into um, the creek or um, the river. The third audience are our winter maintenance managers, and we want them to use data and past history in order to make decisions about how to apply chlorides for um, road treatment. Our second MCM is public involvement and participation. This is, um, we have public notice of meetings. The Bangor Area Stormwater Group meets every other month. Those meetings are public and uh, the calendar is on the Town of Warner's website. And the other item on, under this MCM is a public event. So every year we do the street and stream cleanup. Many of you have been involved in that in the past and hopefully will be again when it's no longer a virtual event like it was this year. Um, and also we do the Maine Science Festival where we see around 10,000 people over the course of a single day uh, and talk to them about stormwater and what it, um, what it means. The third MCM is illicit discharge detection and elimination. This is focused around making sure that um, there are no um, connections into our storm sewer system or nobody is dumping anything down the storm drain system that shouldn't uh, shouldn't be there. This is the where the stormwater hotline comes into play. That's 207-889-6979. Those of you who have heard this presentation before know that this is your My Rob Yerksa connection. It is um, 889-MYRY for those of you who remember by uh, letters better than numbers. And this also requires us to inspect all of our outfalls uh, every year to make sure that we don't have water running out of our outfalls at a time when it's been dry, and which means that they should have no water because if there is water running out of an outfall after a dry period, that means that there's probably um, either a natural spring that is filling up that storm sewer system or there could uh, indeed be an illicit connection. Somebody's um, washer drain connects into the, the sewer system, which it shouldn't do. The fourth MCM is construction site stormwater runoff control. In our um, land use ordinance, we require um, large developments to have erosion and sedimentation control for during construction, and also to have um, stormwater uh, best management practices in place um, for the, the construction project. This means that we do a minimum of three construction inspections um, for every project. It's often more, but by permit it has to at least be three. The um, fifth MCM is post-construction stormwater management. So all those um, best management practices, which are maybe retention ponds or rain gardens or um, storm drains that were put in during the construction uh, and required by our land use ordinance, uh, those have to be inspected every year to make sure that they are actually working. Um, so we actually have an ordinance in there um, in the Town of Warner's ordinances that requires that they um, do an annual inspection and provide that report to our code enforcement officer. And the sixth MCM is pollution prevention and good housekeeping for municipal operations. So there's a bunch of things that we do um, every year to meet this uh, compliance. One of those is uh, street sweeping. It's not just to make it so that our streets are nicer to walk and run and bike on, but also so that any um, sand or um, sediment left on the streets after the winter season doesn't get down into our storm sewer system and out into our streams. The, um, another thing that we do is we inspect um, our whole system over the course of um, five years to make sure that we are keeping up on repairs and we don't have any um, collapsed sections of sewer or um, illicit connections that have arisen. And um, we also have our operation and maintenance plan, which we are actually going to dig into next.
So there's a whole host of um, operations and maintenance procedures. All departments have spill prevention and cleanup and exterior garbage storage. Um, public safety has additionally floor drains, vehicle and equipment washing, um, DIC material application and storage, and then public works and WPCF and facilities, they have even more of these um, procedures that they uh, follow. Lawn and athletic fields care, erosion prevention and sediment control, uh, parts cleaning, painting and street painting, snow disposal and chemical storage handling and disposal. So to start with the things that everybody has to know about, we have um, spill prevention and response procedures. So we want to make sure that every department has a spill kit in a convenient location and that everybody knows where it is and how to get it. So these are things that they'll be absorbent pads, they'll be um, essentially socks or berms that you can put up to contain a spill. Um, and if you are out of a kit or it needs to be restocked, Public Works can help you um, put one together. If a spill or a leak occurs, make sure you stop the source first. So if you have a five gallon bucket that gets tipped over, tip the bucket back up before doing anything else. Um, contain the spill with appropriate devices. So in your, that spill kit, you have those um, containment um, socks and you wanna make sure that you wrap those around the spill so it is not continuing to run all over the place. Um, cover the spill area with absorbent material and keep well ventilated. Most importantly, don't hose down the spill um, because we don't wanna send that into the um, into the sewer system, either the sanitary sewer or the storm sewer. Um, we want to um, absorb it and uh, shovel it up. Call your supervisor to report the spill and then um, contact Public Works to, renew, to remove all the used cleanup materials and replenish the spill kit. Exterior garbage storage. We want to make sure that all our waste containers are covered. Um, that means when you use the dumpster, put the lid back down. Try not to leave it open. We don't want litter flying out uh, and getting into our storm sewer systems or hanging out onto the, the lawns and uh, roads and looking unsightly. If you have a choice, don't place the outdoor waste receptacles near storm drains or ditches unless the um, waste receptacle is at a lower elevation than the storm drain or ditch. Don't put liquids or liquid containing waste in a dumpster or trash receptacle because these are not waterproof and they will leak out. And if you have the ability to um, put it under a roof or an overhang, uh, do that when it is possible. For those of you who um, fuel up at, uh, on town uh, equipment, make sure that you fuel carefully to minimize leaks on the ground and don't top off your fuel tanks. Um, you're not getting that extra tenth of a mile out of a top off. If you are fueling, you must stay with the vehicle and equipment during the entire operation. If you are filling up small equipment, so like a lawn mower or a generator, um, you should do that on an impervious surface. Uh, so that would be something hard and away from a storm drain or a ditch. If you have to do it near a storm drain, protect the storm drain with a berm, a dike, or a cover so that you don't have um, the potential of a leak getting into the storm sewer system. Um, if you're fueling small equipment, use a funnel if necessary to minimize your leaks. And make sure that um, all mobile vehicles and equipment have a spill kit available just in case there is an accident. Some buildings in the town have floor drains and you want to make sure you know where all your floor drains are located and where they discharge. So um, most in fact, all town floor drains are um, connected to a holding tank and, and the sanitary sewer, and there's an oil and water separator and or a grit separator. Um, so it is not going into the storm sewer system when it is going into a floor drain, which is good news. 
Um, if you have questions about your floor drains, reach out to Rob Yurko. If you have a if you have a spill, do use containment booms or a drain mat to cover your floor drains because just because it's not going out into the river doesn't mean that Joe wants it down at WPCF either. And make sure that any storage um, of hazardous materials is not kept right on top of a floor drain. Vehicle and equipment washing. Our um, non-stormwater discharge ordinance prohibits the discharge of vehicle and equipment wash water to the storm drains and waters of the state. Um, this is why we wash our trucks and our cruisers inside the public safety building. Um, that's, they've got floor drains that go to the sanitary sewer, which is where the water is treated and um, any pollutants are removed before it gets discharged to the um, Penobscot River. Um, the outdoor washing, if it is required and you are not able to get to the indoor um, vehicle washing uh, area, um, you may wash it on heavily vegetated areas, gravel areas, or bowl-shaped areas um, that will allow that water to filter through the ground and filter out any pollutants, um, and that minimizes the what gets into the streets or into the streams rather. De-icing material application and storage. Well, this is primarily for um, street treatment. This also covers um, the treatment of our sidewalks. So um, make sure that you have the salt covered if you have a um, small salt uh, storage for your building. Sweep up any de-icing material that is tracked out of the storage areas after a storm. Use a minimal amount of sand or salt that is necessary. Um, I think we have a tendency to try and pave the path with salt so that um, we don't have any ice forming, but it is always better to physically remove that um, ice and snow first rather than try to melt it with sand or salt. Um, and uh, furthermore, the make sure that you are following the rules. And if you have, um, questions about how effective the salt is at certain temperatures, make sure you contact Rob Yerksa for guidance. Lawn and field maintenance. We want to make sure that we sweep up any clippings off of impervious surfaces and keep it out of the storm drains. We don't need the fish eating our grass clippings. Uh, we irrigate only when necessary and when no rain is forecasted. Uh, fertilizer can only be applied by a contractor. If you have any questions about fertilizing, reach out to Rob. And when the field or lawn use allows, it should be mowed at three inches, which allows for better filtration of um, stormwater. Erosion prevention and sediment control. This prevents soil particles from being becoming suspended and leaving the site. Use um, erosion control techniques or devices to stabilize disturbed areas. Sweep up your sediment when you are um, in unloading or unloading areas, but do not hose it off with water. And make sure you keep any stockpiled materials under cover and away from storm drains, inlets, drainage paths, and natural waterways. Painting and or street painting. Uh, make sure that all your brush, paint brushes and equipment are um, cleaned within a contained area. That does not mean that you are hosing off your brush straight into the stormwater uh, drain. Uh, store your waste paints, solvents, and rags in a covered fire and explosion proof containers. When you are out painting, use drop cloths under the uh, painting and preparation activity. Um, and Four, transfer and load paints away from storm drain inlets. So if there's an accident when they're pouring um, from the container into your uh, roller pan, you're not going to accidentally dump it into the storm drain. Petroleum and chemical storage handling and disposal. 
Uh, be prepared with spills. Again, you want to make sure you have a spill kit nearby. Uh, develop spill prevention control and countermeasure plans if you have more than 1,320 gallons of petroleum, a weirdly specific number. Uh, make sure you have safety data sheets for all chemicals used, and that is the case for every um, department to make sure that you've got your safety data sheets um, properly maintained. And um, if you are transporting used petroleum or other chemical products away from the town, make sure you are using a licensed transporter. Snow disposal. Um, we obtain a waste discharge license from MDEP if the snow storage is near wetlands, um, aquifer recharge areas, ponds, streams, or tidal and river areas. And if there is a lot of trash left over, um, it must be picked up as soon as possible after snow melt. Uh, 